Twitter is in big trouble. So much so that the company might fail, says its new owner, Elon Musk. His view is supported by a new study from research company Aptopia, which reveals in just one year since Elon Musk took over, 13% of the daily active users have left the platform. Even worse, the advertisers who keep the lights on are leaving too, leading to a substantial decline in advertiser revenue. But how can a company which turned a $1.5 billion profit in 2019 now be circling the drain? Elon Musk claims it's all the advertisers' fault. But is it? Let's take a closer look. The butterfly effect is the idea that even the flapping of a tiny butterfly's wings can change the world. On the 21st of December 2017, News editor Dave Smith opened his Twitter app and scrolled through his feed. He saw Elon Musk tweeting, I love Twitter. And just a few seconds later, David decided to reply, You should buy it then. Many people replied to Elon Musk, so this one tweet from Dave Smith might have gone unnoticed. But like a tiny butterfly flapping its wings, his tweet had now changed the world. And a few seconds later, he got a reply from Elon Musk himself, tweeting, How much is it? Five years later, on the 26th of October 2022, Elon Musk had completed the purchase of Twitter. And he now shared a video of himself walking into Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco. At the time, Elon Musk was smiling. But that smile didn't last for long. Just one month after Musk took over, World-famous writer Stephen King tweeted, I think Elon Musk is a visionary. Almost single-handedly, he has changed the way Americans think about automobiles. I have a Tesla and love it. That said, he's been a terrible fit for Twitter. He appears to be making it up as he goes along. Seeing that tweet, 194,000 people hit the like button. This was one of many early clues Elon Musk was embarking on a new journey, requiring a very different set of skills from what Musk was used to. From Twitter's launch back in 2006 up until 2022, the leadership of Twitter managed to expand their social medium to 368 million active users per month. That didn't make Twitter the biggest of social media, but it gave Twitter a strong position in its own unique niche while Instagram or TikTok were widely seen as entertainment platforms, Twitter really owned the real-time news and the political debate revolving around it. It became a mandatory tool for political communication and a serious research tool for journalists around the globe. While you might build an audience on Instagram by showing off your good looks, what really mattered on Twitter was what you had to say. In many countries, Twitter became a public assembly hall where political views collided and opinions were formed. All of this was possible because the former Twitter leadership understood three essential aspects of facilitating public debate. Trust, inclusivity and transparency. So in this episode, we will examine how these three aspects led to Twitter's success and how Elon Musk compromised all three of them. Following how Elon Musk runs his businesses, you might have been wondering if Elon Musk understands the long-term value of trust. But fortunately, at this year's DealBook Summit in New York, he was asked about this specifically. See if you can spot his mistake. I would think you want to be trusted. Uh, with respect to Tesla, we make the best cars. Whether you you're, hate me, like me, or, indif or indifferent, uh, do you want the best car or do you not want the best car? This is where Elon Musk is wrong. Being trusted is not the same as being liked. If you go to a car dealership to buy a car, you might not like the car dealer. But if you like the car, you might still buy the car. However, if you do not trust the car dealer, you're not buying anything. The previous leadership of Twitter understood this. Trust matters. 
and many of the features of Twitter were built to enhance the trust of the platform. The internet has transformed our lives and we communicate more and more online. When we have a conversation, it really matters that you are you and I am me for us to be able to trust what is said between us. So in 2009, Twitter began taking 300,000 important accounts through a verification process. Accounts of journalists, government agencies, politicians and experts were manually verified by Twitter employees and Twitter then added a blue checkmark icon next to the names of these accounts. So everyone could see these accounts were genuine. This created a foundation of trustworthy content on Twitter, which elevated the credibility of the whole platform. In essence, this was one of the key assets Elon Musk bought for his $44 billion. But as soon as he took over, he pulled the plug on the verification process and instead just gave away the blue check mark to anyone willing to pay a small subscription fee. This led to chaos. Every account could now impersonate someone else convincingly simply by buying a check mark for it. In one of the worst examples, a user created a false account for an American pharmaceutical company, Eli Lilly. The user then paid the fee to add a blue check mark and tweeted, we are excited to announce insulin is free now. At first, some users found that amusing, but to the company, this was certainly no joke. Insulin was their main product and their stock price now lost 6%, costing them billions. We will look at several of Elon Musk's changes to Twitter, so I will place each of them in this table to show how the changes affect Twitter's key stakeholders. Elon Musk himself, the advertisers and the Twitter users. The removal of verification was something Musk chose because this cut the cost of having employees verify user accounts. And at the same time, it created a new revenue stream from selling blue check marks as a commodity. But to advertisers, this was downright horrible. Eli Lilly was one of those advertisers and they now realized the risk of doing business with Elon Musk. Understandably, they pulled their ads off the platform. Some users were excited at first. They could now have the prestigious blue check mark, just like the famous accounts they were following. But that feeling faded rather quickly as everyone realized when there is no verification, it carries little value. And as a result, more than half of the early adopters stopped paying the subscription fee by April. Everyone was now left with a less trustworthy platform. Over the years, Twitter also faced challenges with deliberate disinformation. Therefore, in 2020, the company started labeling accounts that were prone to spreading fake news. State-owned media accounts from China and Russia were now labeled as state-affiliated media. This helped users identify potentially made-up news stories pushed by authoritarian regimes. But in April 2023, Elon Musk began labeling trusted public broadcasters like NPR in the US, CBC in Canada and BBC in the UK as if they were somehow similar to Russian or Chinese state media. Of course, this created an uproar and the conflict lasted for weeks, ending with CBC adding a pinned tweet to their account, recommending their users to follow them on Instagram and Facebook instead, while NPR left Twitter entirely. So what did this mean for the stakeholders? Elon Musk seemed to enjoy stirring up trouble for the very same media corporations which had written critical articles about him. But to the advertisers, this was hardly a welcome move. What they saw was companies like theirs could suddenly be targeted by Elon Musk himself if he felt like ridiculing them with bizarre labeling on their accounts. And to many users, seeing Elon Musk abusing his power this way certainly didn't increase the trust in the platform either. A final example of the deterioration of trust is how Elon Musk killed the collaboration with external partners. Over the years, Twitter had evolved from just being a social medium to becoming an essential infrastructure for digital businesses around the world. Twitter had opened up their software 
so hundreds of companies could integrate their solutions with Twitter. For instance, Microsoft built a successful product for running ad campaigns called Digital Marketing Center. It allowed companies to create ads and then automatically push these ads onto all the places of the internet where you and I see ads. This partnership was a win-win situation because Twitter made its platform freely available to Microsoft, who then sent ads onto Twitter, from which Twitter made a profit. But when Elon Musk took over, he fired the entire board of directors at Twitter. And with few people left to question his decisions, he came up with the idea companies like Microsoft should pay him a starting price of $42,000 per month to give him the ads from which he made a profit. Unsurprisingly, Microsoft did not take the offer. Instead, they just sent out a notice to their users saying Twitter is no longer supported, killing a source of revenue for Elon Musk. And this example is not unique. With a series of ill thought out business decisions, Elon Musk killed partner access to the platform, hurting all kinds of useful apps and services, even including the alternative mobile apps many users used when browsing Twitter. Avery, Twitterific, Tweetbot, and many other popular apps. Apparently, this was something Elon Musk wanted to do, perhaps to cut the expenses related to maintaining an open platform. But to the advertisers, the tools they were using and in some cases creating now stopped working. And many Twitter users were frustrated. The apps they had paid for and loved dearly stopped working too. This brings us to the second important aspect of facilitating public debate. Inclusivity. The founding principle of democracy is everyone gets an equal say. So, to facilitate a fair, democratic debate, a social medium must accommodate all kinds of people. Some of us are white, some are black, some are Muslim, atheist, gay or straight, and it really shouldn't matter. But in the event someone creates a social media account only to harass different groups, actively defending inclusivity becomes crucial. Although the previous leadership of Twitter certainly wasn't perfect in this regard, at least they tried. There were rules in place to protect inclusivity. Tweets could be reported for violating those rules, and quite often hateful tweets were deleted and accounts suspended. And that was certainly needed. Some accounts were suspended for doxing, and often illegal activity where private information about someone is shared online, to put a target on their back. One example being Nick Griffin, the leader of the British far-right party BNP. He was suspended from Twitter for sharing the home address of a gay couple and urging people to show up at their doorstep. Similarly, Trump supporter John Rivello was suspended for deliberately sending a flickering animation to a journalist who was suffering from epilepsy, saying, you deserve a seizure. This can be life-threatening. And John Rivello was subsequently charged with aggravated assault and sentenced to pay $100,000 to the victim. Suspending accounts like these was essential to Twitter's business model, because we all spend time online in places where we feel safe. In essence, the inclusivity of Twitter was another key asset Elon Musk bought when he bought Twitter. But he just didn't get it. With no one to question his decisions, he decided to initiate a mass restoration of accounts which Twitter had previously suspended. And as we shall see, that decision had severe consequences for the platform. In May 2023, the organization Anti-Defamation League published a study of 65 reinstated accounts, finding these accounts just resumed their role of spreading hate on the platform. Only three of these accounts were subsequently resuspended. ADL suggested ways to improve content moderation on Twitter, but instead of listening to these ideas, Elon Musk threatened to sue ADL, claiming it was their fault his company had lost half its value, and ADL should pay him $22 billion. Then in June, Center for Countering Digital Hate 
published a study showing how Twitter failed to take action in 99 out of 100 cases when users reported posts for violating the rules of Twitter. Again, instead of listening, Elon Musk decided to sue. And in November, the US media watchdog, Media Matters, published a study showing how Twitter places ads for well-known global brands right next to pro-Nazi content. Once again, Elon Musk did not listen. Instead, he launched what he described as a nuclear lawsuit to destroy Media Matters. In summary, Elon Musk deliberately unleashed the hatred on Twitter, and he is now shooting every messenger who reveals the consequences of his bad leadership. So let us again look at the stakeholders. Clearly, reinstating suspended accounts is something Elon Musk thought would increase his number of users. To the advertisers, this was simply bad for business. When the advertiser Walmart stopped advertising, they said, we found some other platforms better for reaching our customers. That's it. All Twitter had the inclusivity companies needed to reach all their customers. And Elon Musk killed it. And while the most far-right extremists might celebrate, they can now spew their hatred on Twitter. This is obviously not what the majority of users wanted. I think co-leader of the Social Democratic Party SPD in Germany, Saskia Esken, said it best. The economy of attention and outrage that we experience today on social media is damaging to our political culture. These developments can be observed particularly on Twitter. The happy discourse with the many open, curious and respectful Twitter friends that I once had is now buried under a thick layer of clickbait-driven outrage, often misogynistic hatred, fake accounts and fake news. Those responsible are doing nothing. That is why I decided to leave Twitter. Last but not least, we will look at the third important aspect of facilitating public debate – transparency. Up until 2016, if you followed 100 people on Twitter, their tweets were the content you saw, which made all Twitter a level playing field for all. Everyone's opinion mattered. However, in 2016, when Facebook had become dominant, it seemed clear Facebook had found a more profitable way of serving content. Instead of only serving users posts that were written by their Facebook friends, Facebook had invented an algorithm to pick out posts Facebook wanted the users to see. For the first time in human history, a company now gained full control of the interaction between human beings at large scale. Instead of us having a normal conversation as we would in everyday life, Facebook users were now turned into consumers of content chosen by a profit machine, which served users more conflict, more hatred and more misinformation to make people spend more time on Facebook so Facebook could serve more ads. The booming economy of this tempted the leadership at Twitter, so they tried to become more like Facebook by making their own algorithm. This was highly controversial at the time because Twitter affected the views of millions of voters, and since tweets were now prioritized by a commercial company, that could potentially shift political views. So after a period of criticism, the old Twitter leadership decided to let users turn off the algorithm. That was crucial for the transparency of Twitter. But in 2023, Elon Musk wanted more users to pay for using Twitter. So he changed Twitter in such a way the algorithm is now turned on by default. And when the algorithm decides which tweets to show, the paying users are prioritized. Simply speaking, Elon Musk has turned Twitter into an evil version of Facebook, where rich users can buy attention at the expense of everyone else. This is no longer a level playing field. On the night before the US midterm elections, Musk tweeted to his 166 million followers he recommended they voted Republican. And he has since repeated he will not be voting for Biden in 2024. 
Musk has promoted the far-right TV host Tucker Carlson on Twitter, and he also took part in kickstarting the election campaign for Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis. He has even invited back the ultra-far-right extremist Alex Jones, who was suspended from Twitter in 2018 for inciting violence. So ask yourselves this. What does it mean for our democratic world when Elon Musk controls an algorithm which runs 5 billion times every day, deciding who gets the attention? What does it mean for our future when our views are no longer formed in a constructive debate among equals, but pushed upon us by those who pay Elon Musk? The worst example of this new reality is Elon Musk himself. Users who choose not to follow him complain Twitter's algorithm still pushes his tweets into their feed. So when Musk tries to convince everyone the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea belongs to Russia, or when he falsely claims talking about gender identity is offensive, Twitter is the content machine which reprograms the minds of millions by pushing his views. To show how low Elon can go, I did some testing by following investigative journalist Jonathan Jepson from Swedish news outlet Aftonbladet. My finding is, when he shares stories which are critical of companies like Volvo, I can click on them and immediately read the contents. However, when he and other journalists share stories criticizing Tesla for using child labor, Twitter suddenly places a warning on these stories telling users it's unsafe to read the news. Man, this is really dangerous, and it will be interesting to see how the EU responds. Historically, it's been quite expensive when international companies cross the line. In summary, the views of the public change like a traditional scale, tipping back and forth when we all bring convincing arguments to either side. But on Twitter, Elon Musk has intentionally put a big, fat finger on that scale. I believe this is his real motive for buying Twitter. To advertisers like Volvo, this creates a new and dangerous reality where Musk controls public perception to some extent. The level playing field is gone, and to the users, this is a huge loss for the freedom of speech. We end this episode back at the Dealbook Summit in New York. This was the first time Elon Musk flat out admitted Twitter is on the verge of failure. Ads are Twitter's primary source of income, and many major advertisers have pulled their ads. To those advertisers, he said, uh, Don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money? Go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? That certainly is clear. It clearly shows Elon Musk does not understand the first rule of business. The customer is always right. But perhaps realizing how his future as a businessman was falling apart in real time, Elon Musk quickly came up with an unexpected new narrative for the failure of his business. Actually, what, what this advertising boycott is, uh, is, is going to do, it's, it's going to kill the company. And you think that the company... Uh, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company. Really? The advertisers killed the company? Oh no, they did not. First of all, the advertisers did not buy Twitter. They did not fire 80% of the Twitter workforce, falsely believing they themselves knew better than all the experts who had worked at Twitter for over a decade. The advertisers didn't invite back all the hateful extremists and let them turn Twitter into an intolerant hellscape, forcing out all kinds of groups who do not conform to a narrow worldview. Neither did the advertisers label trusted news sources as if they were propaganda and hurt the trust of the entire platform that way. And the advertisers certainly did not pay $44 billion for the unique brand name Twitter, which was loved by millions 
and had made its way into dictionaries all over the world, only to replace it with an X. Who in their right mind would do that other than Elon Musk? The advertisers did not abuse their power to pave the way for their own political agenda. And the advertisers did not turn a free social medium into a paid platform where the rich kids are heard and the rest are ignored. You bought the Twitter we loved, Elon Musk. You cut away every essential organ which kept that bird alive. That is why the bird is no longer tweeting.